The media said Joe Biden's president. Ha 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 This is Kenneth Copeland, and he had said some absolutely wacky stuff over the years. So I want to talk about him, look at some of his older clips, and talk about the ideology that he has and where it came from, what it is exactly. What is prosperity gospel, and how did he come up with it? Or how did he come to the conclusion that it's correct at the very least? But first, let's watch the rest of this creepy <laughs> clip. I got to tell you, man, I watched this entire clip beginning to end, and you're <laughs> going to watch the whole thing with me. Okay, wow, that was disturbing and hilarious at the same time. My God, dude, that is just, that is just disturbing. Holy Christ on a cracker. So what you're watching here, what happened is he was laughing that Joe Biden was going to be president. Of course, this is immediately after Joe Biden won the election and he hadn't been inaugurated yet. So yeah, that, that one came back to bite him now, didn't it? But what you're watching with him laughing that turned into a real laugh, this is a real phenomenon that happens with people. They did this test where they asked people to clean up dog <laughs> forever ago, right? Th this is a scientific test that, that was actually run. Now, half of this group was asked to clean it up while holding a pencil in their mouth, holding a pencil like this, right? Now, the group that held the pencil in their mouth rated the task as less miserable than the group that didn't have a pencil in their mouth. Why? Because what you do on the outside is reflected on the inside and vice versa. This is the entire basis for cult control methods. If they can make you believe or make you pretend to believe, make you act as though you believe something, you will believe that thing. And we're watching this happen with Kenneth Copeland. He was pretending to laugh, and then he started to real laugh. <laughs> See? That's how it works. This is He probably didn't even realize this is what was happening, but this is the root of all cult control mechanisms. Kind of fascinating. I thought it was an interesting deviation. But let's talk about some of Kenneth Copeland's other clips, because I, I really do want to talk about his ideology, his basis for his beliefs. So this is the belief, right? It's called prosperity gospel. Now, prosperity gospel, um, now I'll, I'll explain more about it in a second, but just watch this clip. This is from early March 2023. This gives you kind of a glimpse into what he believes, into the ideology. We didn't have any money. Yeah. And I thought, I've got to have some socks. And so I... God, I've never fiended for socks before. He must be dealing with something serious. Socks. And so I scraped together enough money, and I, and I, I went to the show. You know, it wasn't any Walmart yeah. back there then. I mean, yeah. I went to the store, and I heard the Lord, why don't you believe for socks? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Why don't you believe for socks, okay? My first thought was, can you do that? Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. I thought, well, well, of course you can do that. <laughs> and I, I don't know, I, I sold, you know, 50 cents or yeah. something, whatever it was, for socks. Yeah. Dude, what is up with this guy's eyes? Seriously. It's like... I don't know. There's just something very, very wrong with his facial features. I, I don't feel like I'm attacking him here. I, I don't want to attack the guy's looks. That's not my intent. There's just something really, really wrong. It's like it's uncanny valley, right? It's not quite right. There's something just a little bit off about it. All right. So he sewed 50 cents. That's what he said a second ago, right? That means he took 50 cents, that's all he had, and he donated it to a ministry. Donated it to, like, the, you know, the donation box at a church or whatever, the 
the collection plate or whatever. Okay. I don't know. I, I sold, you know, 50 cents or yeah. something, whatever it was, for socks. Yeah. I got covered up in socks. Okay, covered up in socks. I don't know what the hell that means, but I, again, I, I think the guy's fiending for socks. Is this guy the sock gremlin that keeps stealing the socks from the dryer? Seriously? I've been trying to figure out who the hell it is, but... Yeah, I don't know. Somebody finished that joke for me. There's more to that. Anyways. All right. So the idea is prosperity gospel. What he's talking about here, the belief is that you can give God, quote unquote, a.k.a. Kenneth Copeland, your money, all of your money, everything you have, and God will return it to you tenfold. So Kenneth Copeland donated 50 cents to who? I don't know. His own ministry? Who knows? He donates 50 cents. And God returned that to him in the form of socks, apparently. I got covered in socks. So uh, we're going to have to rewind all the way back to mid-May 2019. This video he did with Inside Edition, they chased him down to ask him about his comments he made regarding his private plane. He said he didn't want to ride commercial jets because it's like getting in a tube full of demons. And they chased him down to get answers. What did you mean by that? So on and so forth. And he gives us a glimpse into his prosperity gospel belief system. The idea that you can pay some amount of money to a ministry and get it back. Listen to what he had to say here, mid-May 2019. To those critics that say that a preacher should not be living a life of luxury, what is your response to that? They're wrong. Uh, okay, you're just going to say you're wrong and then give us a creepy smile here? Is that it? Really? They're wrong. Dead silence. And and a creepy <laughs> smile, dude. Okay. Uh. That's it? That it's a misunderstanding of the Bible. No, it's pretty clear. Jesus says it's easier for a camel to fit through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to get into heaven. Not Easy to misinterpret. He seems to be managing it here. Of the Bible. That if you, if you go into the old covenant. Okay. Do you think the Jewish people believe you should be broke? Oh, boy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's getting anti-Semitic up in this piece. We're about to go downhill quick, aren't we? Here's why I want to talk about this in the first place. I'm reading Kenneth Copeland's book at this moment on my Telltale Reads YouTube channel. His book is called The Law of Prosperity. It was written in 1974. It gets wacky, dude. But he's given me some insight into his ideology, into his belief system. There's actually a thing called Prosperity Gospel that's been around for like 100, 150 years, something like that. It's a combination, Prosperity Gospel is. It's a combination of three different ideologies or three different belief systems okay it came from pentecostalism new thought which is basically what they called new age back in the day new age thinking like teal swan or spirit science you know healing crystals that kind of thing and american gospel of pragmatism individualism and upward mobility so the american dream it's a combination of the american dream new age beliefs and pentecostalism that is what prosperity theology is, prosperity gospel. It really arose in the late 1800s, like 1880s is when it started to emerge. has a long history of pastors who have preached about it, but it really took off with like Todd White, Oral Roberts, uh, Robert Tilton, Joel Osteen, Creflo Dollar, Kenneth Copeland, these people in this generation are the ones that really pioneered it and made it big. So here's how it works. This is why the guy mentioned the uh, the Old Testament, the Old Covenant here. Into the Old Covenant? Do you think the Jewish people believe you should be broke? Here's the idea. He thinks that God created a law of the universe, like the law of gravity or the law of whatever, any other thing, like the law of gravity. It's called the law of prosperity, and here's how it works. You give Kenneth Copeland money, God will return that money to you in direct proportion 
to how much you love him. So if you donate that money to Kenneth Copeland as a non-believer, you won't get a penny back. But if you believe in Jesus hard enough, you'll get all of it back. You'll get all of that money back tenfold. That's the belief. And he thinks that Jews worked out this system, you know, millennia ago with God. God told them, if you donate money to me or donate your time or your sacrifices or your whatever to me, then I will give you what you want back tenfold. That's the belief system. And Jews have known about this secret for millennia, and that's why they're rich and you're not. That's his belief. Now, the fact of the matter is Jewish people being rich is a trope. It's fake, okay? There are not a disproportionate number of Jewish people in the banking industry. There are not a disproportionate number of Jews in positions of power. This is all completely and totally made up. But he feeds into these tropes, into these beliefs that people already hold in an effort to bolster his own credibility. Honestly, kind of disgusting. So anyways, that's the belief system. And that's why he mentioned Jews in the Old Covenant. Do you think the Jews of the Old Testament were broke? He said that because he wants her to believe that they worked out this law of the universe with God. Here's a uh, convenient little implied message. Remember a minute ago I said, if you don't love Jesus enough, you won't get anything back? That's how Kenneth Copeland explains it when somebody donates their mortgage money to him and don't have the mortgage money to pay anymore. That's how he explains it. You didn't love Jesus enough. Oh, you donated your entire $75,000 loan you got from the bank to, to purchase this house and you didn't get everything back? Well, that's because you didn't love Jesus enough. It's your fault, not mine, yours. That's prosperity gospel. So keep listening to what he says here. Do you think the Jewish people believe you should be broke? The Bible also says that it's more difficult for a rich man to get into heaven than it is for a camel to get through the eye of a needle. Correct. Ooh boy, how's he going to answer this one? The rest of the scripture. But he said, all things are possible with God. <laughs> wow, dude. Okay, let me explain the context to that scripture. Jesus was talking to his disciples or his apostles or whatever the holy heck they were. And he said, it's easier for a camel to fit through the eye of a needle than a rich man to get into heaven. And they started complaining. They were like, what? Well, I have money. Like, am I not going to get into heaven then? And Jesus says, well, you know, he had to hedge. He's like, okay, well, you know, if you love God enough, then you can move a mountain. If you have the grain, uh, if you have the faith, the size of a, of a mustard seed. So... By the transitive property, that would mean if you have enough faith, you can get into heaven even if you're rich. It was very clearly a verse that was not endorsing being rich at all. It was hedging. It was saying even if you're rich, despite the fact that you're rich, you can get into heaven. But people like Kenneth Copeland and Kat Kerr, another televangelist, believe that if you are not rich... It's because you don't love God enough. That's a necessary component of being in good with God. If God loves you, if you have a good relationship with him, you will be rich. If you have a physical ailment, if you've caught COVID, if you lost your legs in an accident or something, it means that you didn't love God enough because God allowed that to happen to you. It's your fault. It's a convenient little way of suckering people's money right out of them and uh, and resolving that little problem of impotence versus evil. If there is a God and he's all powerful, then he would not allow all of the suffering that we see around us. He would not allow children to go hungry in Africa. He would not allow parasites that, you know, whose whole life cycle is to burrow into your head and, and, you know, eat you from the inside out. Those parasites would not exist if there was a loving God. 
But in Kenneth Copeland's ideology and in Kat Kerr's, it's your fault if you're failing. It isn't that hard to not sin. Oh, yeah. She believes she hasn't sinned before. This is Kat Kerr, if you're unfamiliar. That's something that was claimed that only Jesus could do, not sin. But okay, that's a different thing. I live sin free. You'd be surprised how many people want to argue about that. Yeah, because that kind of breaks Christianity's whole theology, but okay. Well, why are you arguing? What's in your soul? <laughs> Who cares about your wallet? What's in your soul? Here we go. This is it. If you had what's right in your soul, your wallet would be full already, people. Look at the smug look on her face, too. So that's the belief system in a nutshell. They believe that if you are not rich, it is because you are not holy enough. And that allowed them to place themselves on a different level than everybody else. They're more special than everyone else. Keep listening to Copeland here. And he said, if you study the, the Greek behind that, it's trusting. God, you know that you've lost an argument when you're trying to pull apart the semantics and all this stuff, right? It's trusting in wealth. When he said that, his disciples said, they were astonished out of measure because they were wealthy men. They were astonished out of measure saying, how can anyone be saved? He said, all things are possible. Okay, he wasn't saying it's virtuous to be rich. That's what Copeland believes, that it's virtuous to be rich. Jesus was saying it's a bad thing to be rich, but I guess anybody could be saved. If you have faith the size of a mustard grain, then you can move a mountain, so whatever. Check this clip out, mid-March 2020. This should form it out pretty clearly for you. This should tell you exactly what's on the forefront of this guy's mind 24-7. This is two, or no, about a month after COVID really came to the shores of the U.S., and people were taking it seriously. Give or take a month after, like, the first cases were first reported, and everyone was wearing masks and stuff like that, right? People were losing their jobs. They weren't going into work anymore. There were lockdowns being discussed. We were trying to flatten the curve. We didn't have a vaccine. We didn't have any medications for it. We didn't even know what the long-term effects were going to be. It was a big deal, and it was scary, right? So listen to Copeland, what he had to say to his audience in this trying time when people were afraid and they needed comfort and help. What did he say? Fear of this, this coronavirus is, is faith in its ability to hurt you or kill you. Uh, <clears throat> the, 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 the fear of what are we going to do? Yeah, so this is before conspiracy theories arose or, or before they really took root anyways. I'm getting laid off at work. Hey, your job's not your source. Mm -hmm. If it is, you're in trouble. Jesus is your source. Whatever you do right now, don't you stop tithing. Mm. Don't you stop sowing offerings. Well, they won't let us go to church. Well, email it in there, text and give or something, but you get your tithe in that church. If you have to go take it down there and drop it off and unstick it under the door or something, right, you right. get that tithe in that church, you get that offering in that church, and then you go home and you do what we're supposed to do. Does it get more depraved than this, really? Even when people were losing their jobs en masse, even when people were at risk of dying of a, a deadly illness, he says, I don't care. You need to give me your money anyways. That's what's on the guy's mind 24-7. It's always money. He always finds a way to route the conversation back to money every single time. Is this really what Jesus wanted? Is this the message that Jesus preached? If this is what Jesus wanted and expected of people, why didn't he mention this supposed law of the universe even once? Why didn't he bring it up and point out how it works and get rich himself? Why did he have to split loaves and fishes to feed, you know, all those people rather than 
you know, just Jesus walking up and donating a bunch of money to one of the synagogues and then the synagogue, you know, supplying everything. If this is a real law of the universe, why didn't Jesus use it even once? Logic is not a part of this equation with Kenneth Copeland. The only thing, the only component to this equation is you have money and I need to know how to get it into my bank account. Even when you don't have, even when you don't have anything, when you have almost not a single penny to your name, I want the very last penny that you have, even 50 cents. Remember what he said? I sowed 50 cents at the beginning of this. That's a subtle message. I want you to give me every last dime you have, even if it's 50 cents. Doesn't get much clearer than that. We know exactly what's on this guy's mind 24-7, and it's not Jesus. For what it's worth, though, it's not just money that he thinks he can control. The law of prosperity, that it, like the law of attraction, is not just about bringing cash in. It's also about physical prosperity and uh, financial prosperity and, uh, I don't know, emotional prosperity, all, all of it. It's about different types of success, basically. So if you donate money to the church, you will get that money back tenfold, is his belief. If you want to get cured of COVID, for example, all you have to do is donate money to the church and pray for that thing, and God will deliver it. You'll be fine. That's his claim. And if you don't get it, it's because you didn't love God enough. Listen to the prediction that he made here. Mid-March 2021. This is the holiest of the holiest men on planet Earth in his mind, right? He has the strongest connection to God in humanity, he believes, because he's the richest televangelist there is. He's worth $750 million. That means he must have been doing something that God really liked for God to give him all that money. So he's going to make a demand of God. He's going to ask God to do something for him. He's going to leverage his position with God as one of the holiest people alive to get something done. Mid-March 2021, one year after the pandemic started, basically. Yeah, uh, 13 months, give or take. In the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Standing in the office of the prophet of God. I execute judgment on you, COVID-19. Oh, I execute judgment on you, mm. Satan. You destroyer. You killer. You get out. You break your power. You get off this nation. I demand Amen. judgment on you. I demand. Oh. I demand. I demand. Of By the way, the guy on the right here, that's his uh, son-in-law. I don't know if you knew that. Terry... Pearson's Copeland is his daughter's name. This is George Pearson's. I've talked about him a couple times. You can probably look him up on my website. Just type his name in the search bar, owenmorgan.com, and you'll see a bunch of videos about him. Anyway, keep listening here. I demand a vaccination to come immediately. Yes. A vaccination to come immediately. Fascinating. Well, that's really interesting because uh, a vaccination didn't come for like another 12 months, give or take. That's kind of funny, right? No, it's about uh, eight months, I think. This is March 2021. God, look at this dude's face. How does somebody's face come to the point that Kenneth Copeland's face is at right now? How does this happen? Anyways, a vaccine didn't come for a long time. And when it did finally come, he made all kinds of conspiratorial claims about it. Like it was taking people out and all this other garbage. So he prays for a vaccine to come immediately, immediately. That means now, right? I'll give him a month. I'll be super generous and say immediately means within 30 days. Still didn't happen. Holiest person on planet Earth in his mind believes he's capable of calling for God to blah, 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 whatever. And it never happened. It didn't happen, at least in the time that he claimed. And when it finally did, he claimed that it was fake and it was hurting people and all this other garbage. I mean, is the grift obvious yet? It should be obvious now, right? Does he even believe any of this? Or is this all fake? You know, it's not hard for me to believe that, or it's not hard for me to imagine a scenario where he convinces himself 
that if he donates this money to somebody, then this massive amount's going to come back to him. And so he continues getting, you know, studying the Bible and donating money to the church. And his ministry keeps growing and growing and growing until he's up to $750 million, right? It's not hard for me to imagine a scenario where he donated money and he thought that God loved him because God gave it back to him or something. It wouldn't be out of the realm of possibility for him to be a true believer. But I don't know. I don't know. I mean, so many claims from this guy that are so very obviously fake. Is he a true believer? It's so hard to tell. I call you done. I call you done gone. Call you dog gone, okay? I mean, this is something that I would expect somebody to say while watching Murder, she wrote. You come down from your In place the... of authority, destroyer. You come down and you crawl on your oh, belly gosh. like God commanded you when he put his foot on your head in the Garden of Eden. Uh, did did God put his foot on somebody's head in the Garden of Eden? I don't remember anything about that. You will destroy through COVID-19. No more! No more. No more. By the way, Satan wasn't in the Garden of Eden at any point. The story specifically says it was a snake. And God was so mad at snakes, he cursed them to walk on their bellies all their days. It was not Satan. It no more. Is your mom finished? Finish. I was close. It is over, and the United States of America is healed you, and well Thank you. again. Yeah, except it wasn't, it didn't fix anything. This is March 2021, okay. We're still not over it at the time that this is being uh, recorded. We're still dealing with COVID up to this moment. And this guy is seemingly convinced that it's over now. Check out this next clip. But I knew my covenant brother would come. Well, our God is more than enough, Commander Kelly. Yes, he is. Oops, sorry. Wrong clip. Didn't mean to play that one. That It, it was actually this one I wanted to watch. Yeah. Mid-March 2022, one year after that last video. So March 2020, he says, the COVID pandemic is hitting everybody and we're all afraid. But you know what? Whether you're laid off from your job or not, you are going to continue to tithe. A year later, March 2021, he declares COVID over in the name of God. March 2022, a year after that. Listen to this clip. And suddenly the Lord said this to me and I jumped up, ran in there and, and wrote it down. This disease called CODV-19. Called what? Disease called CODV. 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 Okay. Well, see, that's the problem. He's about to make a declaration about the wrong disease. See, God didn't know he was supposed to work on COVID-19. He thought he was working on CODV-19 at this guy's behest. Simple mistake. 19 will be over much sooner than you think. Chris That's what he said last year. This is what he said literally one year before saying this. He said this exact same thing. I declare this over. And here we sit with him saying it all over again. You think Christian people all over this country praying have over Overwhelmed it. Overwhelmed it. Well, sorry to inform you, Kenneth, but as it turns out, you don't have magical powers. You didn't do sh We're still dealing with this. Thanks for nothing. Give me all the glory, saith the Spirit of grace. Many and many, many people will come to know me through it. I'm still Lord over the nation. I'm on the throne and faith in me changes things. <laughs> Just embarrassing. Sad and embarrassing. It, it's so it's so embarrassing. It's painful at this point. 
You want to talk about painfully embarrassing, though? Let's just watch the rest of that clip I pulled up by mistake a second ago. Mistake. This is a video from 1995. He's in a movie, as it turns out. Commander Kelly. This is a dangerous mission. Dude, I honestly, no joke, I love the aesthetic. I think that's fantastic. This is a dangerous mission, Commander. But I knew my covenant brother would come. Well, our God is more than enough, Commander Kelly. Yes, he is. Is everybody ready now? Yeah! Let's get it done. Let's get it done. Ride out for Jesus. Just painfully embarrassing, dude. I can't stand it. It's bad. Anyway, I don't know, dude. Let me know what you think about this in the comments. I think this is hilarious and sad at the same time. This dude is just something else. Copeland, if you didn't laugh along with me, you're in league with Satan, right? Oh, oh, yeah. Actually, Copeland did another a follow-up video to that. Oh, uh, I can't play it now, but it's something else, dude. Holy <laughs> I don't know how anyone fell for his grift, honestly. Is it just me, or does Copeland's face look like a scary doll? Oh, absolutely. Something not quite right about his face. He was apologizing for laughing like a <laughs> preposaurus rex in this video. And then he, he spoils it by smiling. You. I don't even know you, but I love you. Oh, please don't smile at me like that. I'm begging you, don't do it again. Why? Because I love Okay, yeah, creepy stuff, dude. <laughs> There's something not right about this, dude. I'm telling you. 1% goes to charity, 99% Kenneth Copeland's pocket. Oh, absolutely. I'm sure. Dude is just disgustingly rich. It, it's so ridiculous. Richest televangelist alive, I believe. And almost a billionaire. Almost a billionaire. 